Hey, this is Tom, and in this week's video, we're going to make this guy right here to try and get the uh, CNC mill calibrated. Okay, so as part of our ongoing process that we've been doing with the um, updates and upgrades to the benchtop CNC mill is to uh, finally get this thing dialed in right. I, as you may have seen with other videos, we got the uh, backlash taken care of, we switched in the process to using Linux CNC for the controller, um, we built an enclosure around it, added the doors finally, uh, it's time to start making some chips again. And so I drew up this little uh, drawing in uh, in Fusion 360, it's basically just a square, a circle with a uh, a hole in it, right, and then um, a rectangle. Because what I'm trying to do here is I was trying to um, I was trying to test this and make sure that things are really truly dialed in properly, that I'm not losing steps, that I've got uh, that I'm getting accurate cuts. And so let's take a look at uh, the drawing itself. What we're looking at right now in Fusion is the uh, the mock-up or the, the model of the calibration test that I want to run for the uh, the CNC mini mill. So let's take a look. Uh, let's go into the drawing. Oops, let's see. Let's turn bodies off. Sketches on. All right, here's our sketch, and let's go to the front view so we can look at this a little better. Okay. Um, here's our shapes. And we'll, we'll take a look at this a little bit. Uh, the way that I did this, I actually mocked up the, uh, so I did a body of the actual uh, material first, the raw material, and then I went ahead and uh, I created all of the uh, dimensioning in here for, for these. So you can see um, we've got a half inch, we're, we're coming in a half an inch from this edge, right? We do a one inch square. Uh, I didn't do Oh, I guess it, it's one and a quarter from the center to here, but um, I should have probably done a dimension here just to so that I had something to work with. Um, you know, a one inch circle here with a half inch uh, circle in uh, interior that we're going to do. So a slot, circled slot in there. Uh, and then a rectangle, right? Nothing particularly special. Right, uh, and that rectangle is 2.75. Let's move that down here so we can see that better. So let's go back. We'll look at the, we'll, look, we'll turn the bodies back on. We'll turn the sketches off. We'll go to our home view so we can see, and let's rewind. So basically, hello, what are we doing? Okay, so what is, oh, I'm still on sketch. I was editing the sketch still. Right, my fingers. Okay, so basically, I, you know, build, without that, you can't really see it. I make my stock, I do the extrude, right? I create a sketch on top of that. I extrude it down, right? So cut away from that, added my, uh, my hole, which, uh, this part, let's look at that. Let's verify this measurement because I know we'll, we'll want to look at this later. Uh, th so I did three thirty seconds deep, right? And that was. Let's go back and look at that. I think that was right. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah, we'll have to verify that. But uh, so, yeah, we'll check that. Anyways. That's it. I mean, that was really it. And where I made the mistake, and I've, I've since come back and looked at uh, some of these, is I did not have the correct tool uh, in place. I was doing a... Uh, I, I had used a different uh, tool in the cam than what I actually did the machining with. So I'm wondering if that had something to do with the issue. Uh, we'll, we'll go back and look at it. You can see we're doing a Roughing uh, 25, roughly uh, 20, 25.8, 26 inches a minute, which is actually 
kind of fast for this machine. Um, I'd like to see if it can really do that because we're doing we're doing this in one uh, one depth of cut too. If I look at that, oops, here we go. Oh, I did have stock. Oh, radial stock to leave was 0.02 right, twenty thousandths. So you know the radial stock that's our side, right? So unless it's seeing the radial stock as being the bottom. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to have a little bit on this on these outside edges, right? So that I'd have something to clean up. Um, and that should be the radial stock. The axial stock should be the bottom. Right for the Z height, yeah, along the Z axis. Okay, so we're fine. That that was good. Radial stock to leave was fine. You know, twenty thousandths was fine. Um, so that's there. Uh, nothing really spectacular here. Uh, ramp in and out, I do a 10 degree helix. Uh, that, that only actually really comes in in this case. So when we look at this and it generates the paths, you'll see what it does. And maybe I'll, I'll rotate this for you so you can see it a little better. But effectively, the only time I truly do a, a, a helix in is right here, when it comes in to do that hole. Everything else is just basic um, so step one is just the basic roughing, step two comes in and does those contours, right? Um, let's generate those two paths, let's, what, let's have a little fun, let's actually watch it. So let's do, I like this view when I'm actually doing, doing all this. Now it's going to give me a warning, it tells me that um, it adjusted the rest, uh, the, wow, sorry guys, it's like 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, six o'clock in the morning right now. So it's the only time I could get to do this video, and I'm pretty tired. It adjusted where it's looking for material, right? So that's what rest machining is. If you didn't already know that, um, it's it's smart machining. It knows you've already taken the, the stock off, uh, and so it doesn't go back and do it again. So if we wanted to look at this and simulate it, we will show tool paths, but we'll just do the tail. We want stock, and I just realized that I only selected that one operation. So let's try this from the top. Toolpath stock, everything's good, and we'll play it. And let's we'll speed up a little bit. Now what's nice about this is it gives me some statistics in here. So it tells me that the overall machining time is, you know, it's estimating the overall machining time to be about 21 minutes. And so you can see, it goes through, it's leaving that 20,000 stock. Um, oh, I guess I did two pa I guess I did two passes on this one. Okay. That's fine. It's probably a better strategy, to be honest. Oh, I forgot all the changes I had made. Trying to do this better while dialing in everything. You see it goes through. So. There we are. And our last set. Here and there. Okay, so that is it. Right, that should get us what we're looking for. Um, let's let's head back and let's look at what machining is going to look like. Obviously, I did this section of the video after I created the part because I realized that I did it wrong. So let's uh, let's switch back and let's look at what it looked like. When
we're doing adaptive uh, clearing here. Let's see if I can get you a better angle. Well, from this angle, you can see that we're doing the adaptive clearing, and I really like that strategy. It works well. Uh, I did notice as I was going through, though, that you know, um, it was getting some chatter. This was a, a pretty deep, uh, pretty deep cut for this machine you know, at the speeds that I was running it. Um, I'll probably do, uh, as you uh, saw already, I, I've already changed my strategy a little bit on this, but uh, it seems to be doing okay. Uh, overall, I'm... Um, but I did, this is, we're almost done with the roughing pass, and this is when I started to notice, as it was going around that circle there, it did not, uh, it did not like that at all. It, it had some real problems there. Um, it cleaned up, but not like I was hoping, and we can see that very clearly uh, in this next shot as we come in and take a look at it. I, I see the mistakes that I made, and so um, we may have some improvements to do. All right, so as, I, uh, as you can see there, uh, it did a pretty good job. There did appear to be a little bit of um, chatter in there. I, I realized that when I did the cam setup, I actually did it for a different uh, end mill. I didn't realize it. I, I grabbed, um, I gotten this new uh, three flute end mill from Lakeshore Carbide, which did a great job on this, except I had done the cam for a four flute uh, end mill with a radius. Um, edge. So yeah, some of that was my fault. And so what I found with all that too, and I, I need to go back and, and check this, there were two things that um, that I pointed out in the, in the video earlier, right? One is that even though in Fusion I did not set the uh, the depth, I, I, when I did my, uh, my 3D adaptive uh, clearing, I didn't tell it to save or to, um, I didn't tell it to actually uh, leave material, so an axial offset or anything like that. Right? I didn't, it should have gone all the way down to the uh, to the bottom. My daughter loves it this way because it looks like a face. Right? Uh, but it, it, for whatever reason, I've got to go back and, and do a measurement on there. It, it looks like it didn't. Uh, it didn't do that. So it made me wonder, well, is my Z off? You know, did I lose steps with that? But then I went back and I looked at the um, the depth of. There we go. Yeah, I went and looked at the the depth of the the cut here, and it's you know it was perfect, right? I mean, so that was straight on, and that was one of the last operations it did. Um, so I don't understand why why it did that. The other thing that I can see here is that chatter, uh, and I think some of this is when it came in here, um, it dug, it, it's digging in a little bit. Um, I don't have, even even with that finished pass on there, um, there's some there's some chatter, which I don't, you guys, I don't know if you, how well you could see it on this camera, but you, you can probably see the little waviness in there, right? Uh, so settings aren't quite right. Uh, I don't know if that was, Again, like I said, I had it set for the, the wrong uh, tool. So I'll probably go back and rerun this test uh, because what I found overall is my, my one inch, it's coming in about uh, 20 thousandths over uh, in the X, when I look at it from the X direction. And the Y direction, about 15. The circle, it's about 15 in the, the Y, about 15 in the X. However, my uh, my interior hole that I did there, it's like five under, right? So uh, I'm not quite clear on that. Um, my half inch here in the Y on the, the rectangle, you know, 515 roughly. And maybe maybe there's a burr, you know. Maybe I should check to see. And again, it didn't finish, right? So that um, the chatter on there may you know, it's not a it's not a good finish on the on the sidewalls. So that could be, you know, that could be causing some of that as well, right? So um, my two and three quarters is you know, fifteen over. 
right? So I'm not real happy with where I'm at today, but um, then again, this is not terrible either, right? So we've made big improvements on the mill, but it's a refinement process. Uh, you know, this is why guys go out and um, they buy these nice mills that don't have, uh, yeah, that all you have to do is just plug them in, right? Um, and frankly, you know, I'll do that at some point. But for right now, this is a great way for me to get a much better understanding of how CNC mills work. Uh, knowing how, how the machine actually operates makes all the difference in the world. So this is kind of a long video. We'll wrap it up from here. But uh, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw today, please consider uh, subscribing if you haven't already done so. Um, you can also, uh, if you wanted to help support the channel and support the content that we create, I do have a Patreon uh, page available. I put that uh, as well. And uh, again, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And have a great day. Thank <music> you.